So, protons accelerated in particle accelerators can be used to produce artificial radioisotopes. But neutrons can also be used to produce artificial radioisotopes. Let's look at an example. We saw in episode 3 of this series that cobalt-60 is a beta minus and gamma ray emitter which is used to sterilize medical equipment. Cobalt-60 doesn't exist in nature, but is produced artificially by irradiating cobalt-59 with neutrons. If a neutron crashes into a cobalt-59 nucleus, it sticks to it and cobalt-60 is produced. The nuclear equation is pretty simple. The stable cobalt-59 nucleus becomes an unstable cobalt-60 nucleus. That one extra neutron changes everything. The cobalt-60 then decays with a half-life of 5.3 years into stable nickel-60 by releasing a beta-minus particle and not one, but two gamma rays. It's the gamma rays that kill the germs in the sterilization plant. I haven't actually mentioned that cobalt-60 releases two gamma rays until now because I wanted to keep it simple. I think we're now well past simple. But how are neutrons produced? Well, neutrons are produced in nuclear reactions. The cheapest and easiest way to produce the large numbers of neutrons required to make a decent amount of cobalt-60 and many other radionuclides is to use nuclear reactors inside nuclear power stations. So we need to look at the basics of how nuclear power stations work. Let's start by looking at a coal-fired power station, just because it's a little easier. Coal is burned in a boiler and the water in the boiler turns to steam. Because of the large pressure involved, the steam passes through pipes and spins turbines, which then spin the generator, which produces electricity. Nuclear power stations are more complicated, but they basically work the same way. However, instead of burning coal to produce heat, to produce steam, they use uranium-235 or plutonium-239 to produce heat, to produce steam. The heat is generated inside the nuclear reactor. So, how do nuclear fuels produce heat, and what's this got to do with producing cobalt-60? Well, using uranium-235 as an example, if a neutron crashes into a U-235 nucleus, it undergoes nuclear fission. That is, the nucleus splits into two separate nuclei, typically in about a 60 to 40% ratio. The word fission means splitting apart. The fission process releases a huge amount of heat, and this heat is used to generate the steam that turns the turbines. Here are a few examples of nuclear equations for the fission reactions. A very wide variety of fission fragments is produced. Now, very importantly, the fission process typically releases two or three neutrons. These neutrons can crash into other U-235 atoms and cause them to fission as well. A self-sustaining chain reaction can occur if the reactor has the right configuration and concentration of U-235 atoms. Nuclear reactors are often built with irradiation chambers inside them to allow for the production of synthetic radioisotopes using the free neutrons that are released when U-235 atoms undergo fission. The irradiation chambers are designed to be irradiated by large numbers of neutrons coming from the reactor core where the U-235 is. So, if cobalt-59, for example, is placed into the chamber, the cobalt-59 nuclei absorb neutrons and turn into cobalt-60 nuclei. The process takes months. The cobalt-60 atoms are then removed and transported to facilities around the world that need them. Like, for example, this plant that uses the gamma rays that cobalt-60 atoms produce to sterilize medical equipment. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on Nuclear Radiation Episode 8, Synthetic Radioisotope Production. The episode covers the processes by which radioisotopes that do not exist in nature are produced and gives lots of examples of where these synthetic radioisotopes are used. It explains what particle accelerators are and how they produce radioisotopes and it explains the two ways that nuclear reactors are used to produce radioisotopes. To watch the whole episode and the whole series, visit the link in the description below. You can also download the worksheet that accompanies the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.